What's up, Internet? My name is Lamar Engel, and you are watching The Wine Militia. With this guy. Girl. <laughs> you want some? There's nothing in there. What do you, what do you want? Okay. All right. Okay, as some of you know, this week is Rosé Week. We are pretty excited about this because the weather's getting a little bit hotter out there and people always want to know, what can I drink when it's hot outside? For the most part, if you're not familiar with Rosé, it's yummy, it's pink most of the time, and it's refreshing. People are talking about Rosé, whether it's hashtag Rosé, hashtag Rosé all day. I get a lot of text messages. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> I get a lot of text messages from people that have a ton of questions about specific wine. They want to know what my opinion is about these wines and I have no idea why anyone would want my opinion about these wines because everyone has different palates. That's the cool thing about tasting wine with people. Yeah, there's textbook aromas and flavors that go with particular varieties, even with the way that wines are produced, uh, there are different nuances that come out in the wine. Now, if you're not familiar with Rosé, Rosé has a really long history, back past 7000 BC, and we're even looking at one of the first forms of wine production as we know it. Uh, although it is a French word for rose in color, because it has a pale hue of pink or salmon, you'll find that the amount of time that the skins have been sitting on the juice dictates how much of that juice is permeated with color from the skins. And there's pigmentation in all of the skins that bleeds out into the liquid. So that's why you have varying colors of rosé. So we're gonna go to three locations today that you can buy wine locally and we're gonna pick out three rosés. We're gonna base them on price point and even label. So um, without further ado, let's go check out where you guys are buying wine today. Okay, you guys, so we're here at Whole Foods at the district in Tustin in Orange County. Super excited to see what kind of rosés they got going on inside. I've heard good things, so we're looking for a low-priced rosé here. And we are in the wine aisle. I want to just enjoy this aisle here for you, okay? I am super stoked about picking out a rosé that you all can enjoy and something that's kind of of interest to you. So here we are. Let's go. You know, the one thing that always fascinates me about rosé is the variation of color. Look at this. Look at what we got here. All these different shades of pink. Although they had a great display of rosés, we're gonna look for something that's easy on the wallet because mine's on a diet. So let's check it out. We're gonna go to not the top shelf, not the middle shelf, not the medium middle shelf, but we're going right to the bottom shelf. What did you do to become So here we are, Trader Joe's. Today we're actually looking for a wine that's not the lowest price, we're looking for the highest priced rosé that we can find. And we want to see quality and variation of price point plays a part in quality. So we're going to see what you guys are faced with. Check it out. So hopefully we found the one that we're looking for. This is the Whispering Angel Rosé, which I have a good story for. So you guys are probably wondering where we are next. We are here at Costco in Tustin at the district. Now Costco has been the number one place to buy wine since 2008, since the crash. People want a value, they want cheaper wine. Today we're only going to buy wine based on the label. So let's see what we can come up with today. Let's see what our choices are for rosé. It's rosé week. We've got Sauvignon Blanc, we've got Sauvignon Blanc, we've got Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, we've got more Chardonnay, we've got Sancerre, and this 
is it. We only have one, two, three, three choices, four choices of rosé. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick one. We've already picked Whispering Angel. So it's either Brad and Angelina's rosé or it is Chateau Aquaria from Tabal or it is this guy, which kind of looks a little, a little funky. Look at that, it's got a little rose on the bottom. So I think I'm gonna go with this because of straight label attraction right here. So this is Gerard Bertrand, it's an $11.99 wine. The other wines were around the price points that we've already picked from the other two places. So we're gonna go with this based on label only. All right, so here we go. This first wine we picked up from Whole Foods. Now here's the trick. Whole Foods, we decided to find the cheapest bottle of rosé we could find. A little bottle called La Ville Ferme. So, from France, it's representing, this is the 2015 vintage. It should be fresh, it should be gorgeous. Let's go ahead and dive in. Beautiful color already. We got a little salmon, light pink color there. Gorgeous. La Ville Ferme. If I'm saying that wrong, I'm so sorry. Qu'est-ce que tu es la toilette, s'il vous plaît? I, I, I apologize. So here we go, we're gonna dive in. Okay, we gotta wake it up a little bit. I chilled these down at about 58 degrees. Mm. Some short acidity in the front part of the palate. Definitely just cut right through the mid palate, went right to the end, and decided to jump off the cliff quickly. I'm not sure if this is a lemming. This one wanted to die quick on the palate, so I'm not sure why that's doing that, but we can't judge it from the first sip. Not bad, there's very little fruit components that I'm picking up right now. It's under 10 bucks. Matter of fact, it's under eight bucks. It is actually a, a fairly low alcohol wine, which I'm finding most rosés are out there, uh, that are out there are, are definitely lower in alcohol. So that's, that's a plus for acidity and balancing act when it comes to uh, food pairing. That's not, that's not a chicken. I don't, I don't know why I did that. Give this one three out of five stars. And guys, if you need a rosé bottle for under 10, not bad. I'm gonna put that screw cap back on. I just feel safer. And we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna move on to the next wine, which is from Trader Joe's. This next wine I found was the most expensive wine, which I am familiar with this wine. I'm excited because I have a small story that has to do with this wine. This is Whispering Angel from the Côte de Provence region in France. Again, another French rosé. So we're gonna dive into this one. As I open this up, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. This particular wine had <laughs> made an impression on me last June when the wine militia was asked to do an event for Linda Ramon. If you're not familiar with Linda Ramon, she is the punk rock goddess, the diva. She was sweet on Johnny Ramon and on Joey Ramon. Now, here's the great thing about Linda Ramon. Linda Ramon only drinks one type of rosé. That's right, Whispering Angel from the Cote de Provence. Now, it was at her birthday party slash Joey Ramon's tribute. I mean, we had Kirk Hammett there who was uh, showcasing some of his his horror movie memorabilia. We had Jonesy from the Sex Pistols there and Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. We also had Henry Rollins there from Black Flag, Misfits. This was kind of a crazy, crazy night because we were honored to be asked to do a little bit of the VIP backstage wine experience. And we had so much fun doing it. But I gotta tell you, when Linda Ramone and her posse came in, there was a presence there, there was a reverence because she came in with her cape and her rings and she definitely knows how to work a crowd. I was a little awestruck. I'm like, oh my gosh, Linda, you're looking excellent tonight. I literally thought she was the queen of punk rock. As she came and delivered her wines to the bar that we were managing the entire uh, wine fleet, if you will, she made it known to us that this will be the only wine she drinks tonight. And I thought that was kind of interesting because 
There was a bottle of another rosé we won't mention that she definitely had opinions about and she knew her stuff. She tried rosés uh, up and down the coast. She's tried rosés from all over France. She's even tried Italian rosés after talking with her. This is her favorite one. We kind of had a little embarrassing moment because she said, if I come or my best friend comes and wants a glass of rosé, pour them Whispering Angel. So we did. We poured her Whispering Angel and we poured her friend Whispering Angel and it so happens that we ran out of Whispering Angel. Apparently, we didn't realize how many best friends Linda Ramon had. Well, you know how these things start. One guy tells another guy something and then he tells two friends and they tell two friends and they tell their friends and so on and so on and so on. We love you, Linda. I'm sorry. I hope you got the case of Whispering Angel that we sent to you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on another note, uh, punk rock aside. Love the Ramones. Come on, kids. Come on. Even punk rock kids. Drink rosé. Anyway, this is from the Esplanade Valley in the Cote de Provence. Uh, incredible acidity is what we want to see from this region. It's known for acidity, it's known for elegance, and it is known for royalty, apparently. Cheers, let's dive in. It's a good thing. Oh my gosh. Right away, where the other wine was lacking in fruit nose and aromas, this one picked up a lot of lychee notes. Now, if you're not familiar with lychee, it's a fruit that is very aromatic and has a lot of um, kind of meaty characteristics to it, but it's very aromatic, very tropical, and very unique looking as well. So it has a lot of that. I'm telling you, it's got a little bit of pomelo zest. If you've never had pomelo, they're the bigger looking grapefruits that are very citrus, great aromatics, very tropical. This has a hint of petrol. And this is what I'm drinking. I'm loving it. The acidity is kind of doing this through the mid palate. It starts off with a little bit of a slow attack. So it's like, hey, I could be a friend tonight. Possibly. Oh yeah, we'll talk about our dogs. We'll talk about our cars. We'll even talk about the last show we saw. And then it, all of a sudden it's like, so tell me. Do you believe in the afterlife? That's where this wine goes. It goes deep in the mid palate. And then for some reason, oh, that's weird. it dips off before it decides to ramp up for a really long finish, it's actually really nice. I need to finish this glass because this is a really excellent rendition of what rosé is about in the Cote de, in the Cote de Provence. I almost said Cote de Rhone. <laughs> I love Cote de Rhone, don't get me wrong. So, oh, it has like a, it has like a little story in the back here. In the Esclans Valley, Valley, angels, angels whisper. whisper. If you drink, if you drink this, this wine, wine, you might, you hear, might them. hear them. If by, if chance, by chance you visit, you visit us, us, you might you see might them. See them. Why is it like a really bad English accent that made it happen? I don't know. If you got angels working for you, making the wine for you, we've got some explaining to do. No wonder this is legit. How yummy is this? Kudos. I give this one five out of five stars because it's killer and it has a cool punk rock story, kids. Let's be honest. Next to that is our friend from Costco. This is from the Languedoc region in France. Great. From Gerard Bertrand. We bought this label based on packaging. Packaging alone. Glass enclosure. Now, I don't know if you saw this, but the last rosé had cork enclosure. The one before that had screw cap. So, kind of interesting. Didn't mean for it to happen. Glass enclosure. It's got a little rose. Rose, a little play on, on the word rose, huh? And it also, on the bottom footprint, I don't know if you can see this, but that's a rose right there. Hey! <laughs> Alright, easy tiger. Okay, so, here we go. Wow. Let's get excited about this. This is still under 20 bucks. Wow. I am getting like, rose water if you've ever had that or cooked with it or smelled it I get like a little bit of like there's a floral element to it almost jasmine I'm getting a little bit of jasmine a little bit of peach a little, actually a lot of bit of peach now a little bit of apple I'm getting some astringency at the very end of the palate 
My mouth feels a little furry at the, at the end, and it might be different for you, but I'm just getting a little furry tongue on the, on the end, which is kind of a fun thing if you're into that. But again, this is um, super refreshing. The finish is still going. I'm very impressed with that. You guys, this wine, I'm gonna give this one four stars, okay? Because I kind of bought into what I normally don't do, uh, and that's buying for the package, and I'm humbled by it. L allow the curiosity to lead you, and that's okay, because that's starting to get you to drink other wines. It's not fun when you only drink the same old stuff. We're, We're not robots. robots. Three stars, four stars, five stars. You guys, these rosés are showcasing incredibly for this week. Let's kick off the summer with some amazing rosé wines. You guys, I'm excited that you guys were tuning in with us. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you who know us, who've been watching our last season of videos, thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate it. From all of us here at the Wine Militia, we're flipping the wine world upside down with our revolutionary wine experiences. Check us out online, you guys. If you guys want us to come to you and do an experience, we'll put the link there on our website as well for you guys to check out. We would love to come visit you. Love you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Rosé week. Get it. I mean, Jesus made the best wine ever, okay? I know you all are trying to like get that 100 point score, but Jesus already gone up and done that, y'all.